Eastern. Bit of a muted day on the markets today. We're seeing the Dow down fractionally, the S&P up fractionally, the Nasdaq doing the best, if you want to call it that, up fractionally as well. The 10-year note at 3.59. We've seen a slight move to the upside on the 10-year yield this week as we await this Fed decision, moving about 10 basis points higher. Not that notable. And now it's time to get right to CNBC senior economics reporter Steve Leisman, live in Washington, D.C., ahead of the Fed. Steve, take it away. Hey, hey Frank, could be some reckoning today. Markets trading right now with an 84 percent probability of a 25 base point hike. But that's actually below the 100 percent level that we usually go into these meetings with on the day you have an announcement. Uh, the Fed is expected to hike 25 basis points. You can expect the Fed chair to say banks are well capitalized and talk perhaps about this idea of separating monetary policy tools for dealing with inflation with financial stability tools dealing with the bank turmoil. And he might, and this is the key here, emphasize uncertainty about future move. It is in the guidance where all the action is likely to be in markets today. And there could be some sharp reckoning in those markets, depending upon what the Fed decides and what Fed Chair Powell says. Here, the market is priced in the chance of one more hike and then cuts beginning in the summer. Pretty sharp, down to 440. So there could be sharp rate movements for a market that is priced right now. There's the 440 again. And a Fed that currently predicts that year end will be 513 and could today ratchet it up again to 537. With the question also if stocks are baking in cuts and are unprepared for a Fed that still sees itself batting inflation in the year ahead. The key is going to be listen, listen carefully to the Fed chair and how much concern he expresses about the potential for the recent bank turmoil to drag down the economy, growth, and reduce inflation. That is, how much of the Fed's goal to reduce inflation? is accomplished by the banks. Frank? Steve, stick around. We know you got a big meeting at 2 o'clock, but uh, we want to stick or have you stick around so we can bounce a couple things off you really quick. I want to bring in the committee right now. Liz, you're sitting right here to my left-hand side. Um, Steve broke out some numbers. 83% chance of a 25-point hike, 17% chance of no change at all. What camp do you fall in? Uh, first of all, I don't think we can separate monetary policy and financial stability at this point after the events that have occurred over the last couple of weeks. I think they are now hand in hand and they're going to continue being hand in hand until we finish this rate hike cycle. Steve is absolutely right that we usually come into these meetings with a pretty clear idea of what we're expecting. I think 83, 84 percent is still pretty clear of an expectation. What's going to be the risk, and I say this every time that we have a Fed meeting, I mean it even more today. The most dangerous time to trade the market is between 2 and 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. You get the data at 2, you get the dot plot at 2, you get the economic projections at 2. He starts talking at 2.30 and almost inevitably we reverse whatever that first move was. So this is a time where we literally have to sit on our hands, watch it happen, listen closely. I think that probably there's an excuse to do both things. What I would say the responsible thing to do here is to pause, say that we're waiting for more data, leave it open to possible hikes later on, find out if this does have as much of a disinflationary effect as they're expecting, and then do it again. I don't think that that's going to be the case, though. I think he's got clearance to hike by 25 because of the rallies that we've seen over the last few days. All right. Liz Young, 25-point hike. Wait and see approach to trading until at least after 2.30 Eastern time. Joe Turnover, where do you stand? Well, I agree with Liz. The market has given the Federal Reserve the opportunity to raise by 25 basis points. That's clear. Uh, I still go back to the experience of the Orange County bankruptcy in December of 94. The Federal Reserve raises one more time after that. And then by the middle of 95, they're cutting rates. I also believe that the rally that we've witnessed in the market now introduces an element of surprise which previously didn't exist in the last several days. Now the surprise is if the Federal Reserve is far more hawkish than we are expecting, then you will see a dramatic impact on the market and obviously a negative one for that. Um, but what they should do is really sit back and pause. I think, as I said the other day, they're going to be crit uh, criticized in either direction. If he raises 25, he'll be called John Claude Trichet. If he does nothing, he's Arthur Burns. So he's going to be criticized hey, Frank, in either direction. But I Frank, think. Can, can I ask Joe and Liz, who, who are arguing for a pause? And, and in my presentation just a minute ago, I talked about the potential, and I don't know that's going to happen, for the Fed to ratchet up the outlook for 2023 to 537. Guys, even that three bar chart in the back that I used earlier. That's a potential. It wouldn't take only a couple votes to, to go that way. And I just want to know, Joe, does the market freak if the Fed goes the other way and said instead of a pause, 
it really says we're going to do more this year. Yeah, that's that's the surprise, Steve. That's the hawkish surprise, given that the market has has rallied uh, four and a half percent for the Nasdaq and, and the S&P, basically three percent in the last five days. The market is not prepared for that. I also think what it doesn't do is remove the most important condition for the market, and that's the interest rate volatility. How do you relax the interest rate volatility? That's really significant. Last point on all of this is understand the stress in the mortgage-backed security market right now. That is extremely intense. Silicon Valley Bank has $58 billion in MBS that if they want to raise liquidity, they're going to sell. So they're going to sell alongside the Federal Reserve. How is the Federal Reserve at this meeting going to address that? The need to sell MBS to raise this liquidity at a time where the Federal Reserve is no longer the marginal buyer for these mortgage-backed securities because they want to sell with them.